Welcome back to Everything College. I'm your host, Christina Parker, supporting your college navigation while minimizing debt. So I put out a video on my TikTok called um, Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund, talking to students about how they're going to get an additional amount of money um, from their institution that is separate from the stimulus, which dependents also do qualify for, and college students are also in that. So you could qualify to receive the $1,400 stimulus check as well, but that's not what we're here to talk about. So I do want to be honest, when I made that video, I wasn't inclusive of all students, okay? So between $200 up into $2,500 are what students are going to be getting, but I do also want to preface that it could be more. Some universities might give more than that $2,500. HBCUs um, received more money than they received in the first round of HERF money, um, almost doubling or if not doubling um, what students could be eligible to receive and so I wanted to answer um, a lot of y'all questions and everything that I'm going to be talking about in this video is going to be linked in the description so institutions must make emergency financial aid grants to in-person students provided that such emergency um, um, of financial aid grants are for expenses related to the disruption of campus operations due to the coronavirus so this this includes like for instance um you would have you wouldn't have had to maybe buy a computer or a desk or um you know pay for wi-fi or x y and z in order for you to um be able to study and to do your work um and because of COVID 19 right everything had changed. So you might need additional money to take care of these expenses, which make you eligible to receive some of this money. So I do also want to preference that not everyone meets, it, meets the eligibility requirement, and we will be talking about that in this video. So a person who remains incarcerated is not eligible to receive these funds, but someone that has been released and is participating in a second chance Pell experiment would be eligible to receive these funds if they needed this money for, um, you know, expenses that are related to the transition to remote learning. So what are the eligible um, requirements in order to receive this money. So only students who are or could be eligible to participate in a program under Section 484, according to the Department of Education, um, are those that have filled out a free application for the federal student aid FAFSA. So whether this was 2019 to 2020 or 2020 to 2021, and you are um, um, in, in enrolled in your institution this year or not, which we'll be getting into that into another video. I also encourage you to check out my TikTok because I also talk about recent graduates and those who had to um, leave their university who also may qualify depending on your university and their qualifications. So um, those who have their FAFSAs um, would meet the eligibility um, because they have uh, demonstrated eligibility to participate in the program. Students who have not filed a FAFSA, but who are eligible to file a FAFSA, can also receive the emergency financial aid grant. The criteria to participate in the programs um, also include citizenship or eligible non-citizen, a valid social security number, registration with selective services, and so forth. Everything I'm talking about, again, will be linked in the description below. So how must institutions pay emergency financial aid grants to students? So they're going to be paid through these ways, through check, right? Mail to your residents that they have on file, electronic transfers to direct deposit or a debit card. This is a really good option for those who do not have a bank account. Um, and for um, specified payment options, so like cash app, depending on if it meet department requirements, which I'm unsure about. So I would reach out to your university to ask. Um, the disbursement of emergency financial aid grants to students must remain um, without um, deduction of debts, charges, and fees, or other amounts owed to the institutions may not be deducted from the emergency financial aid grant. So what does this mean? This means that if you had um, fees that you owed for late books or for parking tickets that if you qualify for let's say a thousand dollars and you had three thousand dollars or not three thousand three hundred dollars in 
fees or um, debts to your university, they cannot take that $300 out of that $1,000 and give you $700. They must give you the entire amount of money and nothing can be deducted. Um, so, at institutions that provide both online and ground-based education, our students who were enrolled exclusively in online programs prior to the national emergency due to the coronavirus eligible to receive emergency financial aid grants. So, I do want to make a difference between those that are enrolled in primarily online programs, right? before March 13th of 2020, compared to um, those that are in remote learning, right? That means that you have plans to go into a um, in-person session or you had to change due to the emergency. So you maybe had plans or not so, but things had to change because of the emergency after March 13th to 2020. So remote learners are eligible to receive these funds. If you are in, in a specific online only program and you started this program after March 13th of 2020, you are also eligible to receive these funds. But if you started this program prior to the national emergency, prior to March 13th of 2020, and you are in specifically an only an online program, you are not eligible to receive these funds. I also wanna say that the requirements for Title IV um, like, you know, the first one compared to like the fourth one. I do get, um, keep getting mixed information on this from some outlets that are talking about how you do not have to be Title IV eligible. And then from the Department of Education saying you do have to be Title IV eligible. And so I will definitely make sure to link all my different resources down there. But I do want to talk about Title IV eligibility. So that means that you are an academic, um, you're a good academic standing, you don't have any things that are in default and so forth. To my knowledge, this has been waived of the requirement, allowing more flexibilities on how this can be spent, but I have found a little bit of conflicting information, so I do wanna just make that aware. I encourage you to reach out to your university for clarification. So, um, also if I have questions about like, well, what if my university didn't apply? One, I'm going to link down how you can see if your university received money and how much money they've received specifically for universities. I will say this, that it is a little bit hard to figure out how to navigate that because you have to have the OPI ID number and I'm gonna do a separate video on that on how you can find if your school qualified, if they got money and if you are eligible. So universities have one year in order for them to um, spend the money. Well, actually, let me backtrack. One, so universities do not have to reapply. If they apply the first time, then they will also be eligible for funding this time. Now, universities have one year from the date that they receive fundings in order for them to spend those funds. For example, so if they receive those funds on February 25th, then they have until February 25th of next year in order to spend those funds. Will the HERF emergency grant be counted as income for the for the calculation of the expected family? So basically, is this a taxable income? And the answer, according to NASPA, is that this is not going to be a taxable income, similarly to the stimulus checks. Um, can all enrolled students, as well as students enrolled at any point since the declaration of national emergency, including undocumented DACA, international non-credited um, refugee students, dual undocumented students, um, international non-credited refugee, dual enrollment, continuing education, non-degree, and other non-Title um, IV eligible people were um, able to receive funding? So the answer is yes. Um, to my knowledge, um, but I've also said that I have com getting conflicted information on if Title IV eligibility is required or if Title IV eligibility is not required. But to my knowledge, Title IV eligibility is not required in order for you to um, get the second round of money. So. This basically means that undocumented DACA recipients, international students would be eligible for this money. But um, someone from the Trump administration, official with the education or Department of Education, has stated verbally that ED believes undocumented deferred action for child arrivals, DACA, and international students are not eligible for HERF to funds. Um, and they explain their reason because of the like, different laws and things like that. But additional, um, additional information and um, guidance 
has not been released. And so from the Biden, a lot of um, people from the Biden administration is saying that they are, um, they are eligible. And then from the Department of Education, they're saying they're not eligible, but no written guidance has been um, submitted by the Department of Education nor the Biden administration. So now it is up to the school's discretion to decide if they would like to expand eligibility to DACA recipients, international students, and undocumented students as well. So my best advice to you is to reach out to your university and to ask them if you would qualify for these resources and to also check out the links that I linked in the section, um, in the description below. Also, I had a lot of questions um, that I kind of a little bit touched on prior about, well, how do you know what school got what or what? Um, so in my um, description, right, the www.2.ed.gov um, is where you're going to go to, to see about the higher education emergency relief funding. In that section, you're able to see all of the program links, right? So for um, the, the student aid portion, for the institutional portion, um, how much money historically black colleges got, how much money a tribally controlled colleges received, minority serving institutions received, strengthening institution programs, and property and in institution grant funds for students as well. So I had questions um, from some students about who actually qualifies for this money? Meaning like if you are at a community college, a private university, a public university, um, and so forth, are you going to be eligible for this funding? And so the answer is, I don't know about your specific eligibility, but I do know that schools that are private, some may have received funding and I encourage you to look it up. Um, most community colleges who applied also received some funding. Um, um, historically, black universities, like I said, received double funding and more funding, which I'm going to assume that some universities are either going to extend eligibility and or give additional money to students. Then also those that are in public um, universities, whether you are someone that is going for a two-year program or you're someone that is going for a four-year program, undergrad, graduate, or professional degrees are also eligible to receive this money. Now, criteria on specific eligibility for you is dependent on a university. I also got questions around how will I be able to access this money? It's also dependent on your university. Some may be um, locating students who qualify due to their financial aid. Some universities may send out a COVID-19 emergency relief application that you have to file out, file, fill out in order to receive this money, right? So I do encourage everyone to reach out to your financial aid office. I also tell people to please check your emails and to put in HERF or the COVID-19 emergency relief funding. If you want to know specifically how much your university received, a lot of them have not put out guidance around 2021, but they do have to notify students on their public website exactly the, on the exact amount of money that they receive, how much students are going to get, when are they going to get it, and all of those questions that you all have. So I do want to just end on this, that every university is different, right? Every university did not get $9 million or $14 million, right? There's some that got $2 million. Um, not every university has 100,000 students. Not every university has 20,000 students. So it really just depends on your university. And then also additionally to that, those that are full-time students are likely to get a little bit more money compared to those that are, are part-time students will be receiving less money. Like I said, people are going to be getting a minimum of $200 up into um, $2,500, but you can get more than that depending on your university or less than a $200 minimum. I really do hope this helps. Please let me know if you have any additional questions and more videos are coming. Make sure you subscribe and share so all students can have this information and are able to access this. As always, stay studious.